Masaccio is considered the first great painter of the early Renaissance, or Quattrocento period. He was inspired by Brunelleschi and his invention of linear perspective, and subsequently was the first painter to use perspective in painting. Little is known about Masaccio, for example whether he had artistic training, and his mysterious death at the age of 26. In 1422, it is documented that Masaccio, at the age of 20, joined the Painters' Guild in Florence, which is known as Arte de Medici e Speciali. His most famous works include Madonna and Child of the Pisa Polyptic, the Brancacci Chapel, and the Holy Trinity of Santa Maria Novella. The Brancacci Chapel is a chapel within the Santa Maria del Carmine Church in the poor quarter of Florence. It was named after the patron who commissioned it, Felice Brancacci. The overall subject matter of the chapel is the life of Saint Peter, which was slightly unusual. The main reason Brancacci chose to depict this was because Saint Peter was the first pope and at the time it would associate the patron with the pope and Rome, which was a very political move. Other reasons could be that Saint Peter led a good exemplary life and Peter could also be a family name. The chapel is painted as a fresco cycle. This is a story from the Old Testament which is at first unusual in a chapel dedicated to St. Peter, who was an apostle, from the New Testament. However, it is relevant because as Peter preached Christ's teachings, it is also Peter's job to redeem man's sin from the original sin, Adam and Eve. In the fresco, Adam and Eve show with their body language and facial expressions the reality and horror of what they have done. Eve is depicted with her head back, mouth open in anguish, wailing and tears rolling down her face. Her body is deeply howling. Eve covers her naked body as she is ashamed because of the sudden realisation that they are naked and of newly felt lust. Adam is shown covering his face and his hands as if he hopes no one can see him. He is however more overtly naked than Eve, which at the time would have been very shocking. Both the figure's individual gestures are so full of pain and so naturalistic. The fresco itself has a very sculptural form. For example, the rocks in the background are very economical and give the painting a sense of 3D volume with the figures overlapping. They are also quite round and are alone in the setting, suggesting a very barren landscape, a huge contrast to the ample beauty of the Garden of Eden. Furthermore, by highlighting the front of the body and using shade down their backs, Masaccio has weighted them, almost bringing them out of the painting. Their heads are also in different angles, which suggests they are no longer in harmony. The fresco is positioned so that the light comes from a real light source of the window above the altar on the right. This is the fresco on the right hand side of the expulsion of Adam and Eve. It depicts a very obscure scene in the life of St. Peter when the taxman comes. In the group, the vanishing point is Jesus' face, which makes us focus on Christ as the main point of the composition. Saint Peter can be seen on his left, and the tax man with rather skinny legs stands on the right of Jesus. Saint Peter, whose halo is subject to foreshortening, gestures in the direction of the river towards the fish. A coin can be seen in the fish's mouth, both because Peter was a fisherman and so that Peter can then pay the tax man. The idea here is that it is fair to pay taxes, because at the time Florence had a new tax system in place. Thus, Brancacci is firstly relating St. Peter's life to Florence, and for him to be seen supporting the politics of the time. This fresco has a feeling of solemnity as the group have a serious purpose to complete. In order to aid recognition, all the saints appear in similar dress or hold attributes. For example, Peter is almost always depicted holding the keys to heaven approximately 60 years old with white hair. In this fresco, he appears three times as part of a simultaneous narrative, in a blue robe with yellow gold drapery, and despite the greying hair, he looks slightly rustic but physically fit. Similarly, the tax man can be seen twice. The drapery comes from classical sculpture, as does the individuality of the different faces, except for one recognisable head, Denatuic. The bulky drapery on the figures also gives the painting a rather three-dimensional gothic feel. Healing the Sick This fresco shows St. Peter walking past the sick and poor, with St. Paul on his right. 
They both came together to convert and spread Christ's word. As St. Peter, or the Prince of the Apostles as he is also known, walks past the sick, they are healed. This would have been quite a rare sight to actually see the infirmed in Florence. It is believed that the first man healed is a portrait of Donatello, which is a sign of respect from Masaccio. In the background, with Corinthian columns, is a recognisable church in the poor quarter, which could have been the Brancacci Chapel. The Holy Trinity Masaccio's Holy Trinity is one of the most important works of the Renaissance because it applies Brunelleschi's invention of perspective in a fresco, which was revolutionary. It is a fresco depicting Christ crucified on the cross in a small chapel. Behind Christ is God supporting the cross, however we cannot see all of him because he is considered an immeasurable being. Standing on the inside is St John the Baptist and the Virgin Mother, who presents her son forward with a hand gesture, the only movement in the fresco. On the outside of either column are the donor figures, the kneeling patrons. At the bottom of the picture, there is a memento mori as a skeleton in a tomb, with an inscription above it. This can be translated as, I was once what you are, and what I am you also will be. The setting of this scene is in a small chapel decorated in the ancient Roman form with triumphal arches. The arches are supported by ionic columns and Corinthian pilasters, which actually don't support the barrel vault but are simply decorative. Unfortunately, there is not enough documentation to know who commissioned this altarpiece and therefore who the donor characters are portraits of in the painting, but it is assumed that it was a contemporary Florentine family. There are some that say it could be either the Lenzi or the Berti family. In 2012, some records were discovered that the Berti family owned a tomb where the skeleton lies. However, other records mention a Lenzi tomb near the altar as well, as well as other Lenzi decorations around the chapel. Furthermore, Domenico Lenzi was recorded to have died on the 19th of January 1427, which would match the year this altarpiece was painted. Firstly, by using the lines of the barrel vault as orthogonals, they draw the viewer's eye to the vanishing point past God, to the foot of Christ. The perspective of the vault adds huge depth to the painting, making the picture seem three-dimensional, almost like an actual side chapel in the wall, not just a fresco. Secondly, the figures are composed in such a way as to draw our attention to the main figure, Christ, which in turn draws our attention to their smaller scale in composition. This scale is important as when the figures become smaller in the background and larger in the foreground, they again create an illusion of depth in order to enhance the trompe l'oeil effect. There are a few other factors that add to the depth and perspective of the painting. For example, the use of light and dark and the use of shadowing creates great depth and highlights the contrast. <laughs>